Welcome to the St. Ignatius College Prep College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us tonight. So here's what's gonna happen. Each school will have six minutes to share about their institution, but we'll be around for the entire session to ask questions. My name is Jessica and I'm your facilitator. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items. Your cameras and microphones are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type any questions you have for your presenters at any time. Just make sure you use that Q&A button. This is only one of the many different sessions happening this evening, so make sure you go back to the schedule and take a look at the website. This session is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com forward slash Ignatius. Now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter, St. Louis University. Thank you so much. All right, I'm gonna share my screen. Fabulous. Um, and welcome everyone. Um, I am Stephanie Dugo. I am one of the assistant directors for admission here at St. Louis University. And we are absolutely thrilled that you are joining the 656 tonight. Um, so what I would like to do is just share a few things about St. Louis University. We are a medium-sized Catholic Jesuit school um, located both in St. Louis, Missouri, as well as in Madrid, Spain. We have just over 8,000 undergraduate students. We are ranked as one of the top 50 Catholic schools. We have um, two campuses, as I said, St. Louis, as well as Madrid. You can actually go to either campus for all four years and all of our majors can study abroad there. We are the second oldest Jesuit school um, and we were founded in 1818. And we are also the first school west of the Mississippi. So um, that just kind of gives you a good overview of the university. Um, as St. Ignatius, you know, very, you're very familiar with what the Jesuits, who they are and what they are in that education. And so as a Jesuit institution, one of the things that I really like to share is just how we live out our Jesuit mission uh, amongst the 27 different Jesuit schools. So we really focus on that men and women for and with others. Um, and we are ranked number two in the country for community service and engagement. So our faculty, staff and students contributed over um, 1.98 million hours of community service. We are also ranked number four for making an impact. And so those are some of the ways that we live out our mission here at St. Louis University. And as you know, being a Jesuit university, we are home to all faiths. We do have about 52% of our students are Catholic and the rest of other faith denominations. Um, and we do have students from all 50 states and 80 different countries. Now, we have 11 colleges and nearly 90 different undergraduate programs for you to choose from. All of our majors are direct entry, meaning if you wanted to go directly into aerospace engineering or business or anything like that, you can go directly into that. We do have, I will say some of our popular majors or our more popular majors are gonna be our six year doctorate of physical therapy, biology, business, engineering, communication, nursing, and flight science. Um, we have three programs that are what we call direct entry only, meaning that you do have to apply as an incoming first year student if you wanna be considered. The first one is our six year doctorate of physical therapy. So you do have to apply by December 1st of your senior year. It's accelerated six years plus two summers, the next one is our five-year Master's of Occupational Therapy, and then our four-year Bachelor's of Science in Nursing. So if those schools are at, or those majors are at all on your list, that is how you want to apply to St. Louis University. You'll apply before December 1st, and then you'll know about in your uh, admission into those specific programs in early February. All of our majors do have hands-on learning experience, such as internships, clinicals, and research. Um, we are one of a handful of Catholic institutions that are a division one doctoral extensive high research activity institution. And so that means our faculty are required to do research and that you as an undergraduate student can do research as well. So it doesn't matter if you're in the communication program or if you are in any of our STEM programs, of course you have tons of opportunities to do research. Um, continuing on some of the activities that you can be involved in as an undergraduate student our campus is very vibrant, right? So we are division one, as I had mentioned, so we have 18 different division one sports. We're in the Atlantic 10 conference. And of course we are the Billikens, right? So you can't be a Billiken anywhere else. We do have 30 club sports and nearly 50 different intramural programs for you to choose from. And then there are over 150 student organizations on campus. So that ranges from everything from student government, cultural, um, 
social. We do have seven fraternities, seven sororities, and 10 multicultural fraternities on campus. Um, but we have everything down to a Harry Potter club, right? So anything that you're involved in at St. Ignatius, you can continue to be involved in here at St. Louis University. I will say probably about 20 to 25% of our students do participate in Greek life. Um, and everything is, they are, all of these organizations are planning everything that is happening on campus. As I was mentioning, we are located in the city of St. Louis. So it is a very traditional college campus in the heart of a city. Um, so I kind of call it a hidden gem. So when you're on campus, you kind of don't know that you're in a city, but we of course, as a Jesuit school are intentionally in the city of St. Louis to take advantage as our second classroom. And so what Midtown is where we're located in the city and that is the theater arts district. Um, and then of course, as I was mentioning, we do have our own campus in Madrid, Spain. And so, any major, it could be nursing, engineering, physical therapy, all of those majors have the flexibility to study abroad at our Madrid campus. We are actually the first degree granting American institution in Europe to be recognized. And so we are very excited that all four of our, um, all of our majors can study abroad there. Of course, all of your classes, transfer, scholarship, and financial aid go with you. If you don't wanna to go to Madrid, we do have over 45 SLU approved programs where you get the same benefits. Now to talk a little bit about our application process, um, you can apply via the SLU app or the Common App, they're both absolutely free. There are three decisions you have to make at SLU. So one is how you're gonna apply, either one, it doesn't matter, SLU or the Common App. The second one is if you're going to submit your test scores or not. We are in year two of our three-year trial. So you can be admitted for admission, scholarship, all of our honors and scholars programs without a test score. So it is completely up to you if you feel that that test score does represent your academic ability. In addition to your application um, and then submitting your official high school transcript, you would then submit your test score or not, depending on if your test optional. We do encourage you to submit letters of recommendation, your resume, and then we also will offer informational admission interviews um, throughout the fall for you to meet your admission counselor a little bit further. Now, the third decision that you'll have to make is that we are on pathways. Um, so we have early decision, early action, as well as regular decision. And your application for admission is your application for scholarship. So you're automatically considered, um, as well as you all get a Jesuit high school award, which is an additional $5,000 scholarship. And so the last thing I'll leave you with is my contact information. Your admission counselor is Michelle Rogers and she is at another college fair tonight, um, but I look forward and I'll put all of my information in the chat. So thanks so much and I hope, I will hope to chat later. Thank you, St. Louis University. So next up, we're gonna have Bowling Green University. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Katie Barker, and I am here representing Bowling Green State University. I work in our Office of Admissions, um, and I am Senior Admissions Counselor here at BGSU. Now, Bowling, <clears throat> excuse me, Bowling Green State University, we are home to 20,000 students located in Bowling Green, Ohio. So, about four hours from the Chicago land area. We are home to students from all 50 states, 70 plus countries, and 20% identifying as racially and ethnically diverse. So we are going to be that traditional college campus, that college town that we want you to say, while I'm here, I can find that space that I can belong, right? You'll see that at the bottom of the slides. That's a theme, right? That you can say, <clears throat> There are people that I know from my high school. There are likely many people I don't know. Um, and there's someone somewhere from everywhere, right? And in that college town, we are one of America's best college towns. So again, the heart of Bowling Green, Ohio, you pull off the highway, and right there, of course, we have lots of lots of things going on on campus, but it's also that downtown gem. It's local restaurants and coffee shops and arts festivals and always something going on. Now here in Bowling Green, again, one of America's best college towns. We are also only 30 minutes away from Toledo, Ohio, if you're looking for more of a city type of feel. Um, we are, again, four hours away from Chicago. We are 30 minutes away from Lake Erie, Maumee River. So whether that is, hey, I just want to get out on a trail on a nice, beautiful spring day, um, um, and, and have some fun, go kayaking, right? Something like that, you can do that. But it's also internships, right? Um, and job opportunities right here in your backyard. 
Now, with being a residential campus, you will live on campus your first two years in one of our 10 different residence halls. Again, Bowling Green is that community. We want you to say, I am making this my home away from home in one of our 10 different residence halls. Now, don't worry. You can have coffee and Starbucks and Einstein bagels delivered to your residence hall, okay? So when you come visit Bowling Green, you will see our robots on campus. We have food delivery robots that will wheel themselves through the snow, through the rain, what have you, to get you your Starbucks in the morning if you need that to go to class, okay? Now, when speaking of going to class, you have to think about the question. I don't know if we have sophomores, juniors, seniors, freshmen, what have you, parents and caregivers here tonight. The question, what are you going to major in, right? Some people are going, I'm putting it in the chat. I know exactly what I want to major in. Others are like, I do not like this question. Do not ask me, right? At BGSU, we have life design. Now, what that means, this is a one-of-a-kind program. This is working with a design coach. Every single student, 20,000 students, all assigned to design coaches. These design coaches, they help you with one of two things. One, they're going to help you with the question when you go, I have no idea what I want to do, and I am stressed out about it. They're going to help you create that plan. On the flip side, if you come in and say, I am ready to be a teacher, I'm ready to be a researcher, I'm ready to be forensic science investigator, what have you, they're going to make sure that you are making the most of your college experience, right? That you are setting up internships, that you're getting hands-on experience, all of that. Again, you're designing your life with design thinking, and our design coaches are here to do that. Now, with that, we have over 200 majors. Some of our top programs are going to be education, business, aviation, forensic science, marine biology. We have a marine biology lab right here on campus. Yes, in Northwest Ohio um, and so much more. So I encourage you to check it out. On top of that, really thinking, how can I make the most of my academics? Maybe for some students, that's the honors college. You want challenge, you want critical thinking, you want to be in that academically motivated atmosphere. We got gotcha. you. On the flip side, maybe you're thinking, I'm nervous to go to college, and I don't know about this whole college thing, and I have ADD, ADHD, an IEP plan, a 504. How is that going to make sure, how am I going to make sure I'm successful in college? Again, this is a unique program to BGSU is the Falcon Learning Your Way, the FLY program. It's one-on-one -on -one work with a, with a learning specialist weekly, and it's making sure that you're being set up <clears throat> for success to go far. Right. To be part of that 97 percent that's employed going to grad school or starting their own business within less than six months after graduation. It's internships. It's hands on experience. It's the reason that we're ranked number three in the Midwest for three years in a row for student satisfaction. Right. We are happy to be here. Students are enjoying their experience, but it's also knowing we care for you. Right. Sure. That's the counseling center and the health center and the rec center and all of that. But it's prioritizing that community of care, that prioritization on mental health. Now, parents and caregivers here tonight as well. We have a parent, family and new student connections office for you as well to stay connected, not just in the admissions process, but while your student is here as a Falcon as well. Got to give you the quick stuff, right? What is it going to cost you to come to BGSU? As a non-Ohio resident, you are looking at about $30,000 a year. That is tuition, room, meal plan, and your out-of-state fee. If you have a 3.0 GPA and you apply by January 15th of your senior year, you will receive half off of that non-resident fee, okay, through our BG Success Scholarship. But we do have other scholarships available. Now, we do have the Falcon Tuition Guarantee. So with those numbers that you see, you are locked into that amount for four years. But again, additional automatic scholarships. Aim for that 3.0 or above. Aim for that 1040 SAT or 20 ACT. If you submit test scores, we are test optional, okay? But just something to think about. So those things are available to you. Again, you'll apply your senior year. You'll want to get those things in by January 15th. Now, stay connected with us. Six minutes is not enough to learn about BGSU. So please know, of course, we have hundreds of visit opportunities, both in person and virtually, whatever works best for you. So if you want to continue to learn about programs and scholarships and living on campus, whatever that might look like, please connect with us and connect with your admissions counselor. Your admissions counselor is Brian Mestre. I'm here in place of him tonight, but we're your team. We're here to support you and have a wonderful rest of your night. Thank you to Bowling Green State University. Next up, we have St. Ambrose University.
All right. Hi, everybody. Um, welcome. My name is Emily. I'll be um, chatting with you guys a little bit about St. Ambrose University. Um, we are a private Catholic liberal arts college in Davenport, Iowa. So this is in the Quad Cities. Oh. So sorry, everybody. Okay, um, so some buzzworthy facts about St. Ambrose University. About 70% of our students um, do choose to live on campus all four years. You'll notice that when you do visit campus, this is because um, we do have great residence halls in the Midwest. Um, students can live on campus all four years, and then when they get to junior and senior year, they're able to live in apartment style living. Um, this is also going to affect just their scholarships and all of that stuff. So a lot of students do like to live on campus all four years for that reason. Um, 12 to one student to faculty ratio. This is important for you guys to know because it is going to facilitate those one-on-one -on -one conversations with students and their professors. Um, student faculty ratio is more than just the amount of students um, per each professor on campus. Your professor is going to get to know your student in every way, shape and form to make sure that they're getting the best education for them themselves in the long run. I won't go through all these statistics, but just wanted to give a few. Um, the last one I like to mention is that 99% of our students that are applying are receiving um, financial aid of some sort. So this will come through the FAFSA, but also an academic scholarship for your student when they apply. Um, and then something to note, as I'll talk about later, is we don't have in or out of state tuition. So you'll see the cost breakdown for everybody on a slide later in the um, presentation. Um, academic programs. The quick breakdown is we have 60 undergraduate majors um, or more. So just kind of give that a look. You can follow the QR code to see all of our academic programs. 12 master's programs if your student is um, wanting to continue on in business, um, some of our health science programs, and then three doctoral programs in physical therapy, occupational therapy, and business administration. We have a lot of options for students that are considering um, academic programs within engineering, education, health sciences, um, business, as well as a, a variety of others. In terms of gen eds, we will make sure that your students equipped with um, three different areas. So the first one is going to be fundamental skills and knowledge, which is going to be your public speaking, oral communication, written communication skills, and research-based skills. The next is going to be our liberal arts perspective, which is going to focus on creative arts, um, humanities credits, social sciences, and natural sciences. And then, of course, as a Catholic private university, we do also um, look at the Catholic intellectual tradition. So your student is also going to um, be required to take one philosophy class and one theology class while they're here at St. Ambrose. This can be in any area um, within their specific major. So I was a business major. I took a business ethics class. Um, so lots of options there, too, for your student to complete these gen eds. They will have tons of academic resources at St. Ambrose as well. Um, Student Success Center is going to be free tutoring for students on campus um, at any of the 100 or 200 level classes, but we do also offer ad hoc for 300 and 400 level courses. Um, our Accessibility Resource Center is going to be anything for, um, again, if your student has a 504 IEP plan set in place, um, if they have any learning accommodations outside of that, um, physical accommodations, getting around campus, and then also they will do um, any assistance with emotional support animals in any of the residence halls as well. Um, your student will have an academic advisor all four years, so they will also have someone guiding them through their admissions um, four years process, um, as well as just making sure that their schedules line up each semester for them and they're completing their degree in four years. And then finally, Career Center, we all wanna make sure our students are getting jobs after they um, complete their degree at St. Ambrose or continuing on with their education. So our Career Center will work closely with your students to make sure that they are getting the resume help, internship help, mock interview um, skills, anything that they might need to set them up for success after. 
Um, we have tons of ways for our students to be involved on campus as well. These will range from academic and professional if you want to be part of an academic club, all the way down to our wellness and recreation, which is going to be your intramural sports and ways to still stay active if your student doesn't plan to um, be involved in a collegiate sport. Additionally, we also offer campus ministry opportunities. Um, again, playing on our Catholic faith, we wanna make sure that students feel welcome. So even if they are not part of the Catholic faith, they can still come to mass every day, um, participate in any of our campus ministry programs. And then if your student does like to give back, um, they should consider St. Ambrose because we do 170,000 hours of community service every year. And mind you, this is a school of about 3000 students total. Um, so a lot of them are doing this um, because they want to. So make sure that they find that good fit with us if that's um, what they like to do. Um, if your student is interested in athletics, we have um, all of our women's and men's sports listed here. Some of our newest ones are going to be indoor marching arts, esports, and then um, our marching band. And then if your student's interested in fine arts, we do also offer um, art, music, and theater scholarships too, um, depending on if they plan to minor or major. And then with music, they can also receive a scholarship based on participation. Um, when you come to St. Ambrose, um, just know that you'll be sending your student off to a safe campus. We have 24-hour surveillance, a texting system for parents to stay involved as well, make sure that they know everything going on on campus, and then we um, hire professional security staff for the weekends and have off-campus police on the weekends as well to make sure your student is safe. The Quad Cities, as you can see here, is located kind of in the heart of the Midwest. Um, we're, you know, close four hour distance from most of the other metropolitan areas in the Midwest, St. Louis, Minnesota, Minneapolis, Indianapolis. Um, so wherever you are, we're very conveniently located in the Midwest. And we have a lot of uh, programs for students too to study abroad if they would like. Um, as you can see, we have plenty of places that we've been below. A quick breakdown for cost and aid, and then I will wrap up with you guys. So as you can see here, feel free to take a picture of this cost and aid. Um, we have some uh, packages for you guys to be able to see. And then lastly, I will leave you with our admissions requirements. It takes 10 minutes to apply online. Um, please send us your high school transcripts. Um, we're looking for a 2.5 unweighted GPA or higher, and we are test optional. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. So next up, we will have Fontbonne University. All right, can you see my screen? No, we cannot. Oh, okay. How about now? Yes, we can. Perfect. Um, trying to maneuver here a couple screens i'm so sorry um okay i got it it's over here <laughs> um hi everyone good evening my name is lisbeth roman i am an assistant director of admissions at fontbonne university fontbonne university is located in st louis missouri we are in the heart of clayton uh, we were founded in 1923 by the sisters of saint joseph of cardinal net we are a small private catholic four-year university uh, we have just over a thousand total students um, in our student body and our mission is to provide transformative education committed to the common good inspiring students to become global citizens who think critically and ethically to create a more just world here you will see a summary of Fontbonne by the numbers. So as you are starting your college search process, oftentimes you will ask yourself what the faculty student ratio is. So at Fontbonne, it is 10 to one. We are division three for athletics. We have 21 total sports and some of those are um, male, female or co-ed. 68% um, of our students live on campus. We do not have a requirement to live on campus, um, not, neither for uh, incoming freshmen students. Um, and we do have 100 areas of academic study. Here you're going to see the breakdown of our majors and they are divided into three different colleges. Um, some of the major, majors that I definitely want to make sure that I mentioned that we are very excited for for this in, 
upcoming fall of this year is nursing. We are starting a full nursing program, fall 2022. Uh, something that also has been trending recently is our esports and gaming administrations program. Um, we also do have an esports uh, club. Uh, but since we are a small liberal arts college, you know, the humanities, education, business, those are programs that we have um, a long, uh, you know, a long uh, reputation with. Um, and we have been recognized um, as one of the um, best colleges or regional universities in the Midwest. Um, I also want to point um, some of the unique programs that we also have, deaf education, dietetics, and speech language pathology that are also very popular majors on campus, as well as our cybersecurity and computer science. Here, very quickly, you will see some of our accreditations and uh, recognitions we have rec recently received. Like I mentioned, there is no requirement to live on campus. However, we do have uh, these options. We have the St. Joseph Residence Hall, which is more of your traditional uh, living on campus uh, residence hall, some suites in Medai Hall, and as well as some apartment style living um, rooms in Southwest. So again, a lot of our, because we are all smaller institution, a lot of our students do like to live on campus, but again, it is not a requirement. So as you're starting to look at different um, universities, you also want to ask yourself if that is something that you would like to do. But some of the perks of living on campus is receiving those um, resources and services that you can benefit from as a student. Academically, we do have the Kinkle Center that offers tutoring, peer coaching, um, the accommodations if you need them in the classroom or tutoring. We also have the Career Development Center, um, which helps with resume, internship search, um, jobs on campus. If you were looking for a work study um, opportunity to work on campus, that is where you will find that. And I always tell students, you really should be visiting the Career Development Office or the Career Services Office your freshman year in college, right? We wanna make sure that you are receiving that assistance and starting that resume, beginning to think about what type of internship opportunities you want, where you can volunteer, and how you can really start developing those transferable skills that will assist you in, in guaranteeing those positions once you're a junior or a senior and you're really looking at full-time positions. And then we also have our counseling and wellness um, resources, right? Our campus nurse counseling, um, really to really help in any other additional resources that you may need while you're on campus. Here, you're gonna see a lot of information, right? But getting involved is, immensely important when you're on any college campus. So here you're gonna see our academic student groups as well as honor societies. You're gonna see our athletics. So again, here, um, some of the ones that are new are eSports and sprint football, which are starting in fall of 2022. Um, student organizations, um, different cultural opportunities, right? We really wanna make sure that you feel that you can find community when you come to Font Bond and you can have leadership opportunities. We wanna make sure that you're not only getting involved, but that you're really becoming a leader and you're developing those skills that you can apply um, to the job force once you graduate. Um, so some, uh, some of the other uh, organizations you can also benefit from are like Griffin's Achieving Progress, which is a mentoring program where you get mentored by staff and faculty on campus. And again, finding community is really going to add to that student experience. So you wanna make sure that you feel supported and included and welcome once you come to campus. Let's talk merit scholarships. So, um, oh, I so our merit scholarships are completely uh, test free. So we do not look at ACT or SAT test scores for scholarships. Um, our scholarships go up to $15,000 per academic year. I um, mean, they're renewable for the four years that you are on, at Font Bon. And all admitted students do receive a merit scholarship. So although, um, I feel like I skipped a slide, but we will go back. Um, so merit scholarships are just based on GPA only. We also have a presidential award, which is a full tuition scholarship if you are at that top scale range of the GPA. And also if you are coming from a Catholic high school, we do have a Catholic high school recognition award. And so I know if, if you're at St. Ignatius, um, that definitely will apply to you. And we do have a variety of other scholarships that you could um, apply for as an incoming freshman. Oh, I'm sorry. Like I mentioned, we are test free. Oh. One second, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm missing a slide here. And it's this one. 
Like I mentioned, we are test free. Um, so we do not require the test scores for admission consideration or merit scholarships. So if you have a 3.0 or above, you would be automatically admitted to Font Bon. And if you're under the 3.0, you'd be holistically reviewed. We are the only school in the state of Missouri to be completely test free. Um, and so you um, would just need to submit your application completely free on our website or through the Common App. Um, and you will then only need to submit your transcripts for admission consideration. Uh, we do encourage you as you're starting your college search process to really visit campuses. We do have virtual opportunities as well as in person. And if you're interested in a sport, we do have the ability for you to meet with one of our coaches as well. So we always encourage students to let us know. Um, and to come check out campus, right? You never really know if it is a good fit for you until you see visit, like the campus physically, but also how you feel once you're um, when you're there, right? Like, do you see yourself as a student there? Is it a good fit? Is it too small? Is it too big? And. Um, you also have the opportunity to meet virtually with your admission counselor. So we do have on our website how you can find your admission counselor and, and how you can meet with them. I am the counselor for Font Bon um, for St. Ignatius. So um, if you wanted to connect with me, I'm happy to talk to you a little bit further. But I always encourage you to connect virtually with us, whether through our virtual opportunities on social media or to actually come visit campus. Um, we're located in St. Louis, so there's so many things that you can do in a lot of ways that you can get connected to a greater community. So this is our contact information for the Office of Admissions. And I am so excited that you are here and learning about all the options that you have for, for college. Thank you. Thank you. So next up, we're going to have Washington University in St. Louis. All right, hi, everybody. Let me get this pulled up here. All right. Um, so hello, everyone. My name is Morgan Farrar. I'm Assistant Director of Admissions here at Washington University in St. Louis, or as I'll be referring to it from here on out, WashU. Um, I'm also the Admissions Officer for St. Ignatius in the city of Chicago, so I will be sharing my contact info. If you have any questions, feel free to drop those in the Q&A or today. Um, but being that WashU includes the city of St. Louis in its name, I always like to start off our presentations by talking about the city of St. Louis, the city that we call home. St. Louis is a medium-sized city that gives you the best of big city opportunities, but also still having that small town feeling. It's filled with beautiful parks and museums, um, incredibly passionate sports fans, and an amazing food scene. Um, all the while it is growing and changing, St. Louis is actually one of the fastest growing cities for startup businesses in the country. There's, there's new ideas and uh, people coming in every single day. And we want to make sure our students are getting to know the city of St. Louis. We put its name uh, in our name for a reason. Um, so we give all of our students free metro passes so they can utilize the metro system and the public buses to get around and do some exploring. We have two metro stops and one bus stop on our campus. So you'll find students traveling throughout the city, whether it's going to the airport, uh, to a medical campus, or all the way downtown. But speaking of our campus, You'll find that our students are incredibly collaborative, supportive, um, diverse, creative, just to name a few adjectives, but they're all housed within five main undergraduate academic divisions, arts and sciences, engineering, business, art, and architecture. Within those five divisions, you'll find students from all 50 states, in the US territory, over 50 countries around the world. And with this geographic diversity brings a number of different perspectives, ideas, um, thoughts, and just conversations that feed into our unofficial motto at WashU, which is to know our students by name and story. Uh, our community is one that values open, respectful, and honest discussions. And uh, we want you to be comfortable in the uncomfortable. and know that through those conversations with these different people, you'll hopefully learn more about yourself, but also so our community in the process. Because WashU is a place of discovery. Um, we will have our students housed in one division as their home base, but the breadth of our university is available to all of our students, regardless of your background or initial academic interests, from classes to research to study abroad and extracurricular activities. We want you to combine all of your interests to make um, the path that is best for you. When it comes to classes, most of our courses are um, 
discussion, uh, discussion based and small. So we have an average class size of 26 students because we you want you to be actively participating in the process. An interdisciplinary study is sort of the hallmark of our classroom experience, but also just our academic community. Um, students are able to have majors and minors in multiple divisions. And around 80% of our students graduate with more than one area of study, which is a testament to both our multifaceted students, but also to the flexibility of our curriculum, given that there is not one that is university wide. So you will have a lot of choices as to how you want to customize your academic experience. But you're not alone in figuring this out. Uh, one of the best things we do best is our providing a adv strong advisory network. So you will have a four-year advisor, a major and minor advisor for everyone that you add on, pre-professional, residential, and student, just to name a few, who are all there to be resources for you in figuring out your goals. We're also encouraging our students to go outside of the classroom to learn. Uh, each one of our academic majors offers the ability to study abroad and over 40% of our students choose to do so. We are a tier one research institution. So there are over 3000 projects running annually on our campus that our undergraduates are actively involved in. Students can own their own businesses through our student entrepreneurial program um, or they can get involved in the St. Louis community through our Gephardt Institute for Civic and Community Engagement. Our students also have the opportunity to get involved in one of our 450 plus student organizations. Our student union has a three and a half million dollar budget to fund these student groups and activities, whether it's traveling to competitions and conferences or just feeding your group at your weekly meeting. The budget is for you to use as you would like with activities ranging from top ranked division three varsity athletics to 13 different acapella groups. Um, major cultural organizations, sorority and fraternity life, to more of our niche organizations, such as our Butter Churning Society. Uh, our students love to get involved, but that you'll find that they come together uh, via our campus traditions, which include our semi-annual concert series, Wild, or our 13 Carnival, which is the oldest and largest running student-run carnival in the country. So whatever they're doing, and there are many things that they can be doing, our students uh, give it their all. And there's never a weekend on our campus that there isn't something going on. And if there happens to be something to do in the city of St. Louis. Now, here are some brief uh, numbers about our incoming class this past fall. And when looking at these numbers, the most important thing uh, for you to keep in mind is that we have a holistic approach to admission. So we look at every piece of your application uh, to determine not just the type of student that you are, but what you are looking to contribute um, to our campus. And if you're a good fit, we want to make sure that you're going to school, the place that is going to be the best fit for you. That is my job as an admissions officer. One thing to note is you can see we include test scores here. Um, we are going to be test optional again this coming fall and the following fall. So I think most folks who are attending tonight would qualify for a test optional policy. But we do super score both the ACT and the SAT for those who decide to submit testing. Now we have um, some additional deadlines here for you to look at. Um, this is a really handy slide, so feel free to take a picture. Um, here you will find that we have two rounds of early decision on, excuse me, early decision and one round of regular decision. Both of our early decision rounds are binding. Um, so if you apply ED and you are admitted, um, congratulations. We're assuming you're enrolling in the fall, but regular decision is great because it allows a little bit more flexibility, uh, but know that there's no difference in the application or what we are looking for between each of these rounds. And lastly, here are some ways to connect with us further. Um, reach out to us via phone. Check out our website. I'll also be sharing some links in the chat so you have some more specific direction if you need it. Um, but thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I hope uh, all of these presentations are helpful to you. Um, and let me know if you have any questions. All right. Thank you so much. So next up, we have Denison University. Okay, thank you, Jessica. Give me just one second. I'm going to share the screen. Okay. So uh, thank you all so much, everybody, for your attendance here tonight. My name is Nick Radmer. I'm an assistant director of admission here at Denison University, but I am also an alum. I graduated in 2018, so still fairly recently, uh, and I'm really excited to share a little bit more about Denison with all of you this evening. So um, I know I only have six minutes or so, but I really want this quick presentation to kind of 
point out uh, the three main things that we think really makes Denison stand out uh, amongst some of our peer institutions. And the three things are that relationships are at the center of everything we do here at Denison. The opportunities you can take advantage of both in and out of the classroom are vast. And finally, once again, everything we do here is really designed to give students a competitive advantage as they pursue their next steps after graduation, whatever those might be. But to start off, I just kind of want to throw out some of the facts and figures really quickly. We have a student body size of about 2,300 students. We are located in Granville, Ohio, which is about a half an hour to the east of Columbus, right in the middle of the state. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Um, our students are coming from all over the country and all over the world. Only about 20% of our students are actually from the state of Ohio. And about a third of our students do identify as multicultural. And then finally, it actually isn't listed on this slide, but one thing I do want to point out is that we are a 100% residential campus. So everybody is going to be living on campus in the residence halls all four years of undergrad. It is kind of one of those things that I sort of wish I'd appreciated just a little bit more when I was a student, just because I think having that experience of always being within like a 10 to 15 minute walk of your best friends, that's just something that doesn't come back after you graduate. Uh, but to talk a little bit more about our location, I kind of want to start small and then zoom out. Like I mentioned, we are located in the village of Granville. And I think it's kind of surprising for folks who aren't familiar with it. I think when most people think of small towns in rural Ohio, they probably don't think of this like New england -y style village, but that's what we have here. Uh, we have a bunch of really great restaurants and coffee shops as our footprint into town has kind of expanded. Things like our performing arts center and our athletics facilities have kind of become more and more staples of the town. But what I really love about it is the relationships you get to build with people down there. Uh, the story I always love telling people is that my junior year, I actually got straight Landed on campus over Thanksgiving break. And there was a family that I used to dog sit for that actually wound up inviting me down for Thanksgiving dinner. So that's the kind of relationship you can build in this kind of small, more close knit college environment. But if you do want access to something a bit bigger, we are just about a half an hour down the road from the city of Columbus. There's all sorts of great things happening here. A bunch of great pro, uh, pro sports teams, a bunch of Fortune 500 companies that we have a great track record of launching our students into internships with. There's a great restaurant scene, a great art scene. Uh, so all sorts of great opportunities to take advantage of. You are allowed to have a car on campus all four years, or you can take shuttles out uh, to many of the main spots of interest. So it's a really accessible community for our students as well. So I think when it comes to location at Denison, you really are getting the best of both worlds in that you're actually living and studying somewhere kind of quiet, kind of close knit, but you do have access to something much bigger if you want to experience that as well. So bringing it back to campus, I do want to talk just a little bit more about the classroom experience. Uh, we, like I mentioned, have about 2,300 undergrad students. That comes to an average class size of around 19 people. Uh, and what that really means is that, yes, there's really nowhere to really hide in a Denison classroom, but it really pays off with the relationships you get to build, not only with your classmates, but also with your professors. And building lifelong friendships and connections with your professors is one of those things that I think is really unique to liberal arts student, uh, to liberal arts colleges. But I think Denison in particular does a great job of kind of fostering these relationships. You know, for me personally, as an alum, there are several uh, professors who I now consider to be close personal friends as an alum. Uh, so I think if you're really looking to get that individualized uh, mentorship relationship in your college experience, Denison is a great option for you. But to get a little bit more specific into academics, we do have 56 different programs you can choose from. You can see them all listed there. Uh, it is important to note that if you do not see something that you're interested in pursuing, you can create your own major from a combination of different courses across a few departments. But we do also have general education requirements. That's where you'll take classes in things like writing, public speaking, foreign languages, you know, skills that will serve you well no matter what career path you ultimately go down, uh, as well as space for a bunch of electives. So if you want to stock up on classes, that just sound interesting, or if you want to pursue a second major, a minor, a concentration, the freedom to do that is really built into the schedule from the word go. Uh, I do have a sample resume here, but I do want to just keep going through the presentation. There's a lot to talk about. So I also want to talk about how you'll get involved on campus, your life outside the classroom. We have over 160 different student organizations that you can pursue. Uh, these range from club sports and varsity athletics. Uh, we have fine arts groups, non-residential Greek life, service organizations, student government, all sorts of ways you can get involved. I think one of the big challenges for a lot of our students is actually narrowing down those interests into a manageable schedule. But 
you can kind of see what that looks like here. Most students usually gravitate towards three or four different things that they want to get deeply involved in with quite a few leadership opportunities in there as well. But I finally want to talk about how you are prepared at Denison to kind of pursue those next steps, whatever they're going to be. And the key resource you'll take advantage of is the Knowlton Center, which is our career, uh, our career development office here on campus. It's staffed by a bunch of career counselors whose job it is to have their ear to the ground about potential internship placements, uh, graduate schools you might be interested in pursuing, or in careers you want to launch into. So all of these services, they provide the counseling, the resources, resume workshops, what have you, those are good all four years of undergrad, but you can keep coming back to the Knowlton Center for the rest of your life after you graduate too. So if you graduate from Denison and then 10 years down the road, you decide you want to shift careers or pursue a grad program and you don't know where to start, uh, you can keep coming back to the Knowlton Center and taking advantage of that. Uh, you can see some of the internships our students have pursued. And then one last slide here before I wrap up, just to give you a sense of what we're looking for. We are on the Common App. We have no application fee. We have no supplemental essay. And we are a test optional institution. So we do want to make it as uh, stress-free as possible. You can see our decision deadlines on there. But the last point I want to make is that we are an institution that meets 100% of the demonstrated need of all of its applicants. So if you do apply for need-based financial aid, we'll basically get a number that says how much you and your family can contribute per year. But if there's any gap between that number and the total cost of attendance, Denison will meet 100% of that gap through our financial aid program. So we absolutely want Denison to be an accessible option for our students. But even if you're not applying for need-based financial aid, there are merit scholarships that you can apply for as well. So a lot of information to pack into six minutes. Um, I'll stop it there, but I will put my uh, information in the chat as well. I am the admission counselor for Chicago and St. Ignatius, so I'll be your main point of contact going forward. But uh, thank you all so much for taking the time to meet with us this evening. All right, thank you for sharing. Um, so we are right at the 45 minute mark. So I wanna take this moment to thank you so much for joining us to our presenters. To, for you for spending some time with us this evening. When you close this window, there'll be a link to a five question survey. We'd love to hear your feedback. We would encourage you to check back at the schedule. There's another session happening at the top of the hour. I look forward to seeing you in there. Um, you'll also be, be able to find this recording and others from tonight at strivescan.com forward slash Ignatius. All right, have a good night. Bye.